So the lead code problem we are going to solve now is called employee free time. Uh, with this one is actually a lead code premium problem and that's why you see that this interface looks different. This is actually defined as a lead code hard problem but in my opinion this should have been a medium problem but anyways let's try to focus on what the problem statement is. Basically we are given a list of schedule of employees that represents the working time for each of the employee. Now each employee has a list of non overlapping intervals and these intervals are in sorted order, order for each employee. Okay. Now we need to return the list of finite intervals that represents common positive length free time amongst every single employees in a sorted order. Now in this list, we can see that we are given the working times for three different kind of kinds of employees. So this is the timing for employee one. This is the timing for employee two and this is the timing for employee three. If we plot all of these timings on one single like uh, linear line, we can see that employee one works from one to two and then works from five to six. So amongst all of this time, employee one is free. Same goes for employee two. Uh, employee two only works from one to three. So apart from this, the entire period is empty for for him or her. And this is the, the list or the timing for employee three. So we need to find that what is the common free time amongst all of these employees. And we can clearly see that amongst this period, every single employees are free. So this three and four is the interval that is common free time amongst all three employees. And this is what we need to return as part of the answer. So after understanding that what problem statement is asking us to solve. Now let's try to realize that what is going to be the common approach we can take to solve this problem. First, you see that for any particular employee, this given intervals are in sorted order that employee is working from one to two and then works from five to six. Same way over here, we are though we are just given one single data set, but you get the idea that what I'm trying to refer. But the thing is, when we actually have to find the common intervals for each one of these employees or each one of these timings question is why are we even treating these as separate entities? Why don't we just consider that what if all of these intervals are just a simple intervals on a on a string or on a time frame and then we just need to find that what are the common spaces available between each one of them and that's the whole logic. So the idea is that for some reason in order to do that we will actually have to sort all of these timings that we are given for separate employees. Now sorting these can be done like couple of ways um, either we can just simply use like sorting function or we can create an additional data structure where we can inject all of these values one by one and we make sure that we we try to sort them so basically what i'm suggesting is that we use some sort of a, of a heap or a priority queue now we know that the condition of a heap or priority queue is that whatever value you enter, it tries to sort it in some order. So we will try to actually sort all of these numbers in the ending period. So whichever one has like the earlier ending period would be sorted first and whichever has ending period later would be sorted later. If we try to do that with this given input size, then we would find some results that looks like this. Now this is what our heap would have stored that these are all the intervals we have and currently we see that these are not independent intervals. There are there is lot of overlap also present amongst these intervals as well. But this gives us much clearer idea on what we are trying to find. So now the logical step to do is that if we just try to go and start finding out that what are the free slots, then it would not work. Why? Because imagine over here we see that this one uh, ends at one and two and then this one ends at one and three. So we can infer that there is some overlap overlap amongst these two. So we can deal with the overlap and we can say that combiningly like after three, we can try to find some potentially empty spaces. Now after three, we identify that the, for the next slot starts at five. So this slot ends at three, this slot starts at five. If that is the case, we can clearly see that, hey, uh, this three to five slot is an empty slot. So we can use this one, but this would not work. Why? Because 
for the next one we can see that this actually starts at 4 so th this 3 to 5 is not a proper uh, answer and we can find many false positives so we before we start finding out the empty slots we will have to do some work in between and that work is actually quite simple all we need to do is that every time we find an overlap we simply need to merge those intervals and how do we find overlap well the answer is quite straightforward if for one interval if the ending period ends before the starting period of the other one we can define that there is an overlap between those uh, intervals so if we do identify the overlap what we need to do is for the starting value we need to find the smaller value amongst both the intervals for the ending value we need to find that what is the larger value amongst both the intervals so if we repeat that that scenario in this case we can see that for this first scenario this one ends at 2 and this one starts at 1 which means there has to be an uh, overlap so we encounter an overlap so let's select the smaller value so smaller value is going to be 1 because it's same for both but the ending period is going to be 3 because 3 is the larger uh, amongst both of them so combining these two we can just say that we only have one interval of size 1 and 3 same way this one is 5 6 okay so currently uh, this is 3 and this is 5 so there is no overlap so this is a separate entity now amongst this 5 and 6 we need to check that whether this 6 and uh, the next interval starts after 6 or before 6 so this one starts before 6 so because this is a, this one starts before 6 these two also contain some some sort of overlap because there is an overlap once again for starting pointer we are going to take the smaller value so smaller value is going to be 4 so we are going to put Four as the starting of the new interval and for the ending point and value we are going to use 10 so 10 is going to be the new ending in, in, uh, interval and that's it the, after uh, after completely merging the uh, all the overlapping intervals we are only left with just two intervals so this now we can very easily process that this one ends at 3 this one starts at 4 so from 3 to 4 we have some empty slot that we can use so that's quite simple and this is what the whole solution is so let's do a quick recap on what we just did first of all we use a heap to basically uh, sort every single interval inside based on the ending uh, uh, order so whichever was ending before would come first inside the heap okay next we did the merge interval op operation for all the overlapping intervals and also we did that in like normal fashion we simply need to iterate over the given uh, values that are already sorted inside the heap so that can very easily be done and after merging we only need to find the empty slots and uh, put those empty slots in some sort of answer array list that we have created and that's it this is sim simply we can return let's try to calculate the time and space complexity so in order to generate this process of sorting of every single value it takes n log n work okay after we are done with this one we need to do the merge interval so that takes big of n work and after that we need to find the answer or empty slots that also takes big of n work so overall we can say that time complexity is going to be big o of n log n which is quite good given the input and this actually has practical applications as well we see the application of this type of problem in all sorts of calendar and google calendars and all the scheduling problems so this is a real life scenario that we are solving in uh, lead code and if we see space complexity well because we are using an additional heap it's going to be big o of n as well so relatively this is good enough uh, time and space complexity now let's quickly see the coding solution for this one So first of all we are defining our class interval uh, which contains the start and end value then we have our main solution where we need to return the list of free times for every single employees based on the given schedule so first thing we are going to do is initialize a new array list to store the results then we are going to initialize our heap or priority queue where inside the heap we are going to insert the values based on the ending pointing uh, so the value that ends first would be would be placed at the beginning of the of our heap and then we are simply going to add all the intervals inside the heap one by one irrespective of employees 
after doing that our heap should contain all the values in the appropriate manner and then we are simply going to run a while loop that while the given heap is not empty we are going to check that what is the current heap and what is the current value and what is the previous value we are going to check that if there exists any particular uh, overlap or not if there is an overlap then we are we will have to select that what is going to be the appropriate end pointer if there is no overlap then we are simply going to add those values to our result array or result array list that we have created and uh, in the end we are simply going to update the next and previous counters uh, to update the values that we are fetching out of the heap and that's it basically so this is the whole solution now unfortunately i would not be able to run the solution because this is a lead code premium problem but anyways the solution is available on our github repository so if you want you can go ahead and check it out from there thank you